All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what that pop means. It's time to go. Man, if you never did that again, that'd be nice. <laughs> All right. Well, so there's a hot topic going around. A lot of a lot of Chris Godwin chatter. Is it buy, sell, hold kind of slash draft question <laughs> mark? Seems like nobody's really sure kind of what to do with this guy. A lot of people like him. Some people are like, no way. I'm taking him up there. Um, so we're going to spend a couple of minutes here and figure out what you, what you guys are thinking. What uh, what, What's your general stance on on Chris Godwin right now? We've, we've done a couple of mock drafts with a couple of guys in the podcast dynasty uh, community here uh, with the dynasty dummies and the dynasty outhouse and Jake Anderson and... Who else is in there? Fat Mormon. Um, All kind of guys. Bunch of different people. Shane says from uh, the Data Dynasty Football Factory. Uh, so lots of different guys. And in both drafts that we've done with those guys, he's been at 5-1 and 5-4. Yep. So are you guys in or out at that area? Like, so the guys all after and before him, like on after from the 5-4 mark, as was after the NFL draft, um, Allen Robinson, Corey Davis, Tyree Kill, obviously in a little bit of hot water. Um, Calvin Ridley, Tyler Boyd, Mike Williams, all those kind of guys going after um, uh, Godwin. Godwin in this last draft. In the first draft, Allen Robinson, Corey Davis went before, uh, right before Godwin. And then typically Jarvis, Cup, uh, Robert Woods, all kind of go right before Chris Godwin usually goes off the board. Yeah. Um, so, do you think he's properly rated, overrated, underrated? You in on him? What What do you got right now in in a, in a startup draft? I think he's properly rated. I mean, I was sitting there with the five uh, four twelve and five one turn, and I was debating. I, I I could feel the Chris Godwin heat, like it was breathing down my neck. It was some fire, like because I knew I wasn't going to get him if I didn't take him there. And it was guys like Jarvis and all the guys you said. It's like a tier of guys right there. And Bobby Woods and Cooper Cub had went off the board just before me, and I probably would have taken either one of those guys if, the, if they just fell to me. But I was sitting there stuck between basically Godwin and Jarvis Landry is what it came down to me. And I didn't have a wide receiver at that point, so it's like, is he going to be your wide receiver one kind of thing? Like, can you lean on him like that? And it's like, it's, it's hard to – it's hard to – feel that he, that he can especially he's not even the number one guy on their team but i some people think he's going to uh <laughs> they're playing old mike well, Evans. that's just for clickbait but i they mean said that was their that was their plan last year didn't yeah. exactly happen yeah but i went back and like listened to what we've said about chris godwin over the years right uh -huh. so we we took him in our rookie mock it up before you fuck it up in 2017 he went 2-2 two -two, which is right where adp was at the time for rookies and then we did, I searched on our webpage, the FFDynasty.com, just searched Chris Godwin up in the search bar, and a YouTube video came back that said the title of it was Buy Chris Godwin Before It's Way Too Late, and that was March of 2018, when he had an ADP of, I think, 81 or 88 or something like that in that range, and now he's up to 48. So, like, we've been... Basically doubled in value. Right. And we've been bringing you along this whole time. If you've been listening to us, you bought him cheaper than he's ever been, which is right now he's as expensive as he's been and it's probably going to continue to go up and i mean i think i think i'm in i mean what's not to like all right well you know it chris godwin's a ball player there's <laughs> you, you, he's good any chance the ball anytime all the right john gruden anytime the balls come at him he's he's looked good doing it you got an adp of 48 like casey said in the mock draft we did right around there five one five four so that's pretty on par pretty on par, pretty right there i mean and i just named receivers there's obviously running backs that go in that I area i was just about to say that in any draft you get to in that area some teams are wide receiver heavy to get started some teams are balanced and some right. teams are running back heavy and, and most teams me and big co and jay wayne we're usually kind of running back heavy so at that point chris godwin is potentially sure. in play well, like Jason just said, if you're if you've had a, if you've grabbed a you know depending on your scoring format, if you got two running backs and a tight end already, and you're looking for wide receiver, Chris Godwin's a safe investment. Like he's only 23 years old, he's he's had two really good, you know, 
seasons not as a total season like he only in average points per game he's 38 last year and that's leaving in week 17 where he had like 29 points so you factor out week 17 he's going to tumble down that average so it's not like he was even averaging wide receiver three last year but only 23 i think i had him at 27 but. um all right so that's maybe that's what i think the, it was like 11.9 points a game I got him at eleven five seven, but that yeah. might be that's a one point bonus league for forty. So there might be a couple guys ahead of him that shouldn't be because in normal settings, I just went to the league that I could get to the fastest to get that stat. Um, but anyway, it is like that's the kind of person where you might take him, and then a round or two later, you might have a wide receiver who you feel better about plugging in as your wide receiver one. As a but you know Chris Godwin is a safer dynasty asset. You plug that you know people love yeah. Chris Godwin. They loved him coming in. He's only he's only looks good when he's got an opportunity. Um, I feel like he, 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 he probably is properly rated here, but you are by at, at 48 ADP. Obviously there's an average there, but in that fourth rent, late fourth, early fifth round, you are buying that potential. At, you're buying Adam Humphreys left already. You're buying Deshaun Jackson. It's, it's, it's kind That's of 179 targets. there gone. And, and Bruce Arians is coming to town and, and, you know, maybe Jameis gets a little bit more consistent, uh, you know, obviously, uh, Ritzy Fitzy, Fitz Fat, Fitz, Fitzpatrick's gone. Um, they had a connection at the beginning of the year last year. It came out hot. Fitzpatrick had a connection with everybody at right. the beginning of the year last year. Came out with four games of ridiculousness. I, I don't mind it. It is hard to pull the trigger now at where it is. I mean, it, I, I can't. I, I can't imagine Chris Godwin being the fourth player in my dynasty team, like off the board. Like I can't. I can't. Yeah. Put it together. Yeah. So I find myself in that position where, like I said, we're usually not draft in a startup position especially these mocks we've been doing he's falling um, to the fifth yeah so right right like it's, so if he's your fifth player it's, no uh, yeah it, it, it's, it makes a huge sounds better obvious. yeah it does late fourth early fifth fourth player fifth player that's a that's a huge difference and of course you know anything can happen in a startup if you're yeah. trading around you might move back in the second and you might have extra picks you might have to you might throw a couple of guys there in the fourth and fifth and chris godwin's one of them i th- i think he's a great at dynasty asset and i think yeah. i think he's in for a huge like i just said it really makes me feel terrible trying to have look at him as my fourth player in a startup. But if he really does exceed these, you know, if he meets 90%, 85% of these expectations people are putting on him in this Bucks offense, first year Bruce Arians coming back around and prove that Bruce Arians got something in the tank and it gels with Jameis Winston, next year you could look at him as being your second or third player on your team in a startup. You yeah. Know? Well, that's what you're hoping for. You're hoping for that you're kind of paying right now for what could be this year and then hopefully next year it's up it's up another slot another round or so even exactly uh from where this guy can go but usually i'm in a situation where i've probably got three running backs uh and i'm i'm not typically a guy who's gonna have a quote-unquote receiver one on his team i'm gonna be grabbing a bunch of receiver twos with weekly receiver one upsides like robert woods and those kind of players. So Chris Godwin, I think, does have some receiver one week to week upside oh, here for or sure. there. I definitely and agree with that. I, but I do. I have found it hard to be in that position, and I have passed on Godwin once or twice. Um, but I've, I'm definitely coming around to it and I, digging in on him and digging in on the coach and all that other stuff. I definitely sold myself a little bit more on the fact of Chris Godwin. So I, I would agree. I would say properly rated with with even hopes of moving up another tier um and i'm i'm definitely not i'm definitely not selling i'm i'm holding yeah you can't be selling i mean the way i look at it is he's he's big he's not mike evans big but he's 6'1 209 he's strong he separates he high points it drink i mean seriously the contested yeah. catch is ridiculous it's for real and he excels in the red zone he's a good cheater with his hands he's versatile they're talking about put him in the slot a lot. I mean, he right. And he's unselfish. He works hard. He catches everything out of sixty catchable balls. He caught fifty nine of them. Uh, one drop, like that's pretty impressive. Uh, what more are you looking for in a guy? Yeah. So, so, so pre draft uh, mock draft that we did, Sammy Watkins went like a round and a half, or maybe even two rounds after Chris Godwin. At this next draft, Sammy Watkins went before Chris Godwin, I believe. So. How do you guys feel like just as a gauge? Would you rather have Sammy or would you rather have Godwin? Woo-hoo. I mean, I, I've 
I would have. I'd rather have Godwin for the safety. He doesn't have a problem with his foot. Right. If Sammy's healthy in it's the first five years. weeks, Sammy could absolutely annihilate it this year. But I, I, I've been on the train of like, well, he's finally back. As soon as he's getting going, he's off of my team. Right. And I, would I trade him for a Chris Godwin? I, man, I think I might. The the top of the mountain upside of Sammy Watkins is probably better than Chris Godwin. Just. Based oh, on what's going on, but it's, it's, it's whether or not, like, I just want the consistency that I think. Jameis Winston would have to grow by leaps and bounds to get anywhere close to what Patrick Which Mahomes did possible. last year. We'll, we'll talk it about possible. some Bruce Arians possible, here but like, oh, you, after the break. You, but, uh, know, you know what Mahomes and Andy Reid's bringing, yeah. and if Sammy Watkins can stay healthy, the sky is the limit. It really is, but it, there's so much more gamble there, Yeah, and I would rather have Chris Godwin. Right. What about DJ Moore? Uh, I think I, I think I would take DJ Moore. What uh, about Corey Davis? I think Corey Davis and Allen Robinson are are like the are pretty tough questions for me. Like I really like Allen Robinson. I think Allen Robinson is probably a better player, but the situation for for Godwin and just what happened with the Bears last year and spreading it around and doing this and that. Like I want to say I would take Allen Robinson, but it's really it's it's hard for me to invest a lot in Allen Robinson. But I mean, I guess it's kind of. I don't know. And Corey Davis, the same thing. The offense is just not nearly as fun as what I think this, this they could don't, be for Godwin. They don't have LaFleur anymore. Um, man, that's, that's and they a brought really in another call. wide receiver. That is receiver. a tough question. I'm, I'm trying to I might take that. both of them over Godwin. What about <laughs> Kenny G? Kenny Galladay? Yeah. I mean, I think you got to take Galladay. Yeah. I think I got to take Galladay, and I could go DJ Moore, but I think, I think I'll throw Godwin in ahead of the other guys. I just, I've been playing this Corey Davis game for a little while, and it's. I still think it'll pan out, but yeah. it's just like I'm ready to play another game. See, I feel I like I don't own too much Corey Davis, so I haven't been like, yeah, I haven't really been burned too. I got bad a lot of yet, Corey so Davis. I'm still uh, just another example of that early, just hype lasting young, forever. Young wide receiver that you, give, you love to have on your team. It looks great, but he aggravates you trying to get him in and out of your lineup not everybody's juju smith schuster man yeah it's tough for those young wives i still like Corey davis i think Corey davis is like you said i think Corey davis and Allen robinson sit there and you look at them as that wide receiver one right. that alpha dog right. and chris godwin but the reality of it is chris godwin's probably going to score just as many points as if not more than they are and he might get more targets right you you're know? just you're, you're the mantra of that receiver one of those two guys in your head is mm -hmm. is tough to shake and it's hard to when you when you're clicking that button to be like mm, this is a, the the big dog on their team yeah but i got to tell you i've been screaming it for years a lot of times that wide receiver two is getting easier coverage and it's an easier throw for the quarterback and it wouldn't surprise me at all if chris godwin was a more consistent every week starter than Allen robinson yeah or yeah who, i mean if he catches 100 balls out of the slot <laughs> Sure. He's going to score yeah. a bunch of touchdowns. And well, before we take a break here, let's uh, just some some little bit of Godwin talk. Like you said, 179 targets vacated. Um, Humphreys had 105, and DJX had 74. Um, five touchdowns for Humphreys, four touchdowns for DJX. Godwin had a nice season: 95 targets, 59 receptions, 842 yards, 12 point or 14.3 yards per reception, seven touchdowns. Um, and from his rookie year with 55 targets to 34 receptions with one touchdown, 500 yards, that's a nice step forward. And really, we only need Godwin to take another small step forward to really be worth what we're all talking about right now. Like if he's if he's a thousand seven or eight and, you know, 90 or 80, 80, 80 catches or so, which is probably like. Who's the three over there? Probably O.J. Howard if you really want to get down to it. And right. I mean, it's Brashad Perryman. It's Justin Watson, who I'm, I'm down with taking a swing on. And then s some undrafted free agents, which that can happen. And uh, the white boy, Scotty Miller from Bowling Green, is real fast, who <laughs> Bruce awesome. Arians has said, you know, he's got some John Brown in him, which, mm -hmm. you know, Bruce, he, he Bruce liked helped, that. Bruce loved some John Brown. Uh, but there's really not a ton of options over there. But uh, but Godwin and Mike Evans and O.J. Howard are three really awesome options. And I don't think it takes that much for him to really take a step forward here. And, and you think with this new Bruce Arians offense coming in uh, that that Godwin will really be able to take that anticipated step forward. He's really not that far away, in my opinion, with the stats that he had last year and the way that, you know, and again, move into the slot. I mean, 
Bruce Arians moved first order of business in Arizona. Move Larry Fitz to the slot. Mm-hmm. They had Heinz Ward in the slot when he was in Pittsburgh. Reggie Wayne in the slot when he was in Indy. Like, guy yeah. knows how to work a really good slot receiver. Right. He's he's like me on Madden. I'm trying to get my best receiver in the slot. I <laughs> yeah. always was. I was like, I don't get why they don't put the best receiver in the slot more, give him more room to work. Why put him on the boundary out there and give him an extra defender? Because those guys over the middle. We, well, that's... But Bruce was at it's flag a, football now, so the middle nobody's scared to go over the middle anymore. <laughs> Bruce was ahead of his time with his best receiver in the slot, and now the the, the, the rule changes are you don't really get your head taken off as much. Oh, you know, I think it's I think it's he's ready to roll. Yeah.